different countries, especially from the region, and uh, uh, especially APOA, uh, I mean, uh, the Asia Pacific uh, region. <coughs> uh, I would like to give some uh, tips about the correction maneuvers in uh, scholars, especially because I don't want to say many things about the uh, uh, general spinal deformity because uh, just 15 minutes I will have. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say that the, uh, I like to read this kind of ancient articles. This is uh, Mr. Little published this article end of the 19th century in Lancet uh, about the rotation uh, component of the scoliosis, the importance of the rotation component. And we all know that the scoliosis is a three-dimensional deformity, including uh, axial, sagittal, and coronal planes. Uh, and uh, of course, we need to know some uh, important, uh, essential biomechanical um, uh, t uh, terms uh, about the, uh, uh, related to the uh, maneuvers. Uh, one of these is the coupled motion. The coupled motion means uh, the motion in particular plane couples another motion in another plane. For example, if you are uh, applying a translation, and this also affects uh, the rotational uh, uh, rotation axial plane too. So, uh, I, I would like to say that I, I'm going to show you some maneuvers, but all of maneuvers related to each other. So, once you are doing something, and then it affects the other plane too. The second one is the uh, the material property of the spine. The spine is a viscoelastic structure because as we all know that the fluids are uh, has uh, viscosity and the solids are has uh, has uh, elasticity, but uh, the spine is mixed uh, all of this and uh, this is important because uh, if we uh, actually uh, use a, a constant traction to the spine, then we may get more correction in time. So uh, we are using this one, especially at the end of the uh, uh, surgeries, uh, doing by doing the, the repeated uh, maneuvers, and sometimes we are using this also growing raw technique as well. Within time, uh, because of the viscoelastic property, we, we may achieve more uh, reduction. Uh, we have some basic correction maneuvers already actually uh, defined in, uh, in, the, in the literature, and uh, uh, one of them is the road contouring and translation. The other one is road the rota the rotation. We may have concave side uh, distraction and the convex side uh, compression, and we also have uh, axial vertebral derotation. Uh, the last one is the, I think, the uh, recent one. The road contouring and translation, especially uh, defined by the Eduardo Luque, uh, who, who already have uh, Luque trolley uh, systems, and then uh, Cotral Dubuse already used uh, this technique as well. Uh, nowadays, uh, some colleagues they use persuaders and uh, especially long tulip uh, listesis uh, uh, screws in order to get some, some translation, especially at the apex. We have also ro the rotation uh, after putting the rod, the banded rod, in the uh, as as you can see here. Then we we actually rotate this rod in order to convert the coronal plane deformity to create sagittal plane kyphosis because all, all, all we know that the, the patients generally have in idiopathic sclerosis especially have hypokyphosis and we need to create some kyphosis. But uh, I would like to emphasize that this is not affect actually axial plane rotation. Hot, uh, and uh, when we look at some cases because of the friction at the screw and the rod interface, we may get some increased uh, repump because of this maneuver. And we need to actually correct this one afterwards. Uh, this bilateral uh, apical vertebral derotation, especially defined by the sales hook from Korea, and uh, most of the system, they have uh, the, the, the different types of this system. As we all know that the medial wall of the pedicle, especially thicker than the lateral wall. If you put bilateral screws and connect to each other, you can get very good, actually, uh, um, uh, rotational torque uh, in order to reduce your uh, uh, rotational problems. I would uh, show some ca case example together with the videos uh, taken the, uh, uh, during the operations. This is this young lady, uh, 12 years old, uh, 
and Premanarki with 42 degrees cop angle measurement, as you can see that she is uh, quite uh, uh, flexible. Here at your left hand side, there's rot the rotation maneuver. You can see here fits over that. Mm, are there any laser printer? Can I can use? Uh, this is feet and this is head. This is left and this is right. This is repump. Uh, while you are doing your rot the rotation, you can see that uh, your repump at right side uh, increased. This is this is uh, normal as I uh, as I mentioned before because of the friction. And then uh, you need to do vertebral the rotation. This is again. This is head. This is feet. This is right and this is left. If you are doing your uh, Rot the rotation uh, while you are putting your one of the rotator at the apex of the main thoracic curve, and this is for the neutralization of your the rotation maneuver. Uh, I always afraid of uh, overcorrection with this kind of flexible curves. Uh, that's why I'm putting. That's why I'm putting a neutralized uh, a tower at the at the uh, actually at the uh, bottom. So uh, while I'm uh, neutralizing the forces with the, my right hand side, I, I am doing the, the rotation with the left hand side. And you can see here in another perspective, uh, this, is, this is now I'm neutralizing my right hand side and doing the, the rotation towards the right in order to correct the patient's uh, repump. And these are the uh, actually basic uh, maneuvers. One of them is the distraction maneuver from the concave side. I'm using the distractor, and then I'm distract all of the pedicle screws here to, of the main thoracic curve, cop to cop, and then I'm doing now uh, compression at the, uh, uh, from the uh, convex side. And uh, sometimes in order to get uh, shoulder balance, it's very important to do this kind of maneuvers at the top between the T, uh, especially between the T2, 3, and 4. This is the post-op X-ray of this uh, particular patient. You can see that is uh, uh, we achieve a acceptable uh, and balanced, well-balanced uh, correction. This is another patient is 14 years old, Lenka type five, uh, and this young lady. Uh, this is the post-op uh, X-ray of this patient. This is early post-op and the late post-op. Uh, as we all know that uh, if you are doing the selective fusions for this kind of Lenka type and five cases, and you expect that. Uh, the minor curves will be corrected spontaneously. And then uh, this, is, this is one of our papers uh, about this uh, important topic. And coupled motion also valid uh, with this, uh, with this uh, during this phenomenon. If you are doing your uh, actually um, uh, uh, correction in major curve, of course, uh, because of the coupled motion, you, you should expect that the, your minor curve will be uh, corrected spontaneously, and this allows us uh, uh, actually uh, saving some mobile segments for uh, those patients. This is another one. This is a double major cure, but is the uh, thoracolumbar cure is uh, uh, is the uh, the magnitude of the thoracolumbar more than the uh, main thoracic cure. And this young lady is uh, also is not that mature. Is the menarche is two months ago, and for this particular patient. Still, there's a, uh, a, a very, uh, how do you say, uh, is a quite flexible uh, curvature stay she had. And uh, all of other maneuvers is the same. I mean, the, rot the, rotate, the rotation and other things, so on. But the important thing is for this particular patient is we are putting our uh, the rotators, apex of the main thoracic and the apex of the thoracolumbar curve. And then we are we gonna do the uh, uh, reverse correction maneuver for this particular patient. As you can see here, now I'm correcting the right uh, side of rib hump and left side of the loin hump with this maneuver. And you can see uh, from uh, the another view here, you can see that. And then uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna after, after uh, uh, tighten my screws, especially uh, 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 from the neutral vertebra, probably is like something like T12. And then I'm gonna do my distraction and compression maneuvers uh, uh, afterwards. This is the post-op uh, X-ray uh, of this patient. 
And you can see that we, we also have a very good uh, sagittal view, uh, is, is a good uh, acceptable kyphosis for this particular patient. This is a 55 years old neglected AIS patient, uh, had a triple major cure, uh, is a quite uh, rigid cure. He had, after doing some releases, uh, which is the Schwab type two osteotomies at, the, uh, at both cures, uh, what we're gonna do is uh, putting all apexes each towers and then we're gonna do reverse the rotation again. As you can see here, now we are correcting all three curves in, in a coronal plane, to, uh, I mean axial plane together. And then this is the, this is the post-op uh, X-ray and the clinical appearance of this particular patient, uh, also again uh, acceptable uh, uh, appearance. I would like to uh, mention also for road technique, which is very valuable uh, for uh, actually uh, the patient who has rigid deformity with poor bone quality. Uh, especially in adult scoliosis and together with the neuromuscular deformities. Uh, one of the participants already actually asked uh, one of our colleagues uh, that the, uh, especially the patient with the osteomalacia and the uh, osteogenesis imperfecta, after the, of course, doing this, uh, 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 some kind of um, uh, osteoporosis treatment, uh, we, we may do this technique as well. Uh, the, the logic of this patient, uh, the, this technique is the you, you, uh, you are putting the many anchors and then connecting, to connecting two anchors to each other. I'm gonna show you. This is a 46 years old lady. She's, she's a, uh, uh, have a, have a actually a, a really a rigid and uh, high deformity, severe deformity. And uh, she got some respiratory problems like short, short, short of breath and, and uh, uh, some back pain as well. As you can see that uh, she got like uh, 150 degrees uh, curvature each. And these are the uh, CAT scans. And you can see that is the sagittal plane looks like a coronal plane because of the uh, uh, magnitude of the curve. And, and uh, this is the traction X-ray looks really rigid. And after the releasing, uh, as, as you can see here, I put many level screws here and there. And then after correcting the all of the curves, within uh, uh, in individual curves, I, I'm, I already connected with the domino connectors, all of these roads, in order to prevent uh, uh, pullouts, uh, because otherwise uh, you may get some pullouts uh, because of the rigidity curve and the, uh, and the, and the uh, uh, poor bone quality. This is very important article already published by the uh, Winter Lonstein and Dennis, and then, uh, it's very important to know that in all of the curves, we should go for balance, not, not for the correction. And as Jean Dubuisse says, the maximum correction is not the optimal correction. So we always go for the coronal balance, which is the especially shoulder and pelvis uh, balance in, and, and also uh, reduce the truncal shift and also a sagittal balance uh, too. In summary, uh, traditional and newer techniques we have, and then we need to actually uh, combine them. Uh, also, we need to consider some basic biomechanics and material properties for the spine. Uh, sometimes we need some special instruments and there is no, uh, actually no special recipe. I would like to invite you to uh, current concepts and cadaver cores, combined cores of SRS in coming Wednesday actually two or three days later, if you time, please stay here in Istanbul and then we have very good uh, uh, meeting uh, together with the well-known, world-known spine surgeons. Thank you very much for uh, attention. Yeah. Thank you really. Uh, very nice uh, overview and correction maneuvers. Uh, probably some, especially the neurosurgeons are not very familiar with those maneuvers. Are there any questions? Yeah. Thank you for the nice presentation. Do you put both rows together and th then you do the rotation, then you close or what? Uh, for AIS patients? Yes. Or, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm just put the uh, concave road first, rotate it and then put another road. The other one. Why didn't you do the, the other way? 
What did you put the convex first? Con concave uh, first. No, what did you do the other way? After you derotate, put the convex, you'll get less complication because you will do compression rather than destruction with the convex one. Then put the, the concave and then the, do the destruction. Maybe there, there is no one way actually in this, in this situation. I know, I, I, I'm sure that many of the surgeons have their own actually uh, ways, but I'm, I'm familiar with this technique. So, uh, one and then you pulled as you said with the reduction screw sometimes the screw will be pulled out yeah that that's why uh, generally I'm what I'm doing is uh, before before the putting uh, the set screw of the apex because the apex screw is has more uh, how do you say uh, offset screw uh, uh, I just do the rotation then it makes more reduction and then afterwards, I'm doing the set screw or the, uh, the screw at the apex. This prevents too much friction on your rods, and uh, it also prevents the uh, pull out of the apical screw. Yeah. Do you, do you attempt sometimes uh, two maneuvers together? For instance, their rotation together with uh, distraction and uh, compression on the rods. 